to the Apples and Snakes Digital Showcase for BBC Words First 2021. Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Andreas Visto. And my name is Deanna Roger. Um, Dee, tell me, so, tell me what's been going on with um, these poets over the last few months. So over the last month and a bit, I've been working with a group of 16 poets to develop their creative writing and performance skills through a series of online workshops. Um, we'd like to thank, before we kind of get into the showcase, we'd like to thank BBC One Extra, the Asian Network, as well as uh, BBC Drama, and of course, all the participants for all their hard work, focus, and also generosity of community. Like the workshops have been so much fun and you can feel that everyone is there because they love spoken word and they really want to invest in their craft and art form. So big up. Amazing. I am so excited to hear everything that has developed over the last few months and how these poets have created these amazing videos. So thank you so much, poets. Um, but before our poets come up and do their pieces, Deanna, would you please be our sacrificial poet? I'd love to be today's sacrificial poet. I'd also, before I read this new poem, like to thank our guest tutors who came and shared their craft and expertise with the group, Jacob Samler Rose and Adam Kamling, and also yourself, Andreas Fistos, because coming up, I learned from so many different voices and styles and it's priceless. So thank you, thank you, thank you for, for being on their journey. So this is a, I'm gonna read a new piece and um, it's a form poem, so it's a villanelle and it was inspired by a playwright called Kevin Elliott who wrote a play called 40 Winks and it's gonna be in my new book which will be out in October called His Fingers Have Left which will be published by Burning Eye and it's called Vauxhall Corsa Driving Over Dartford Bridge. I'm sorry my music won't play. Sorry that the Halfords man couldn't fix me. Sorry you've run out of things to say. Hope the grind of my engine sounds okay. Put your foot on my clutch, move me up to gear three. I'm sorry my music won't play. Left hand gripping so tight like my body might sway. Right one wipes and wipes so your feelings aren't seen. Sorry. You've run out of things to say to the guy who can't drive, whose heart you can't save. Strapped in by your side in my passenger seat. I'm sorry my music won't play. It's an ongoing problem. It's not just today. You know in your view that it's not meant to be sorry. You've run out of things to say sorry. Driving doesn't make you brave. Doesn't sputter if you cheat. I'm sorry my music won't play. Sorry. You've run out of things to say. There we go. There's the poem. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I really, really look forward to your new collection. Yeah, thanks. Well, new stuff is coming coming out and this is what we're here for, to celebrate all this new work. So these poets, they, there were four weeks worth of um, workshops and we looked at the theme of ritual and kind of the repetition of, of action and idea and up the ritual of our writing process societal ritual, personal ritual, and they could take that in any direction they wanted. And they also didn't have to take that as a theme, but I thought it'd be interesting to kind of interrogate um, just so that they had kind of a greater awareness of their own, of their own-ness. And so these are brand new pieces for us, for you watchers and listeners. And so, yeah, here we go. So up first we have Rihanna. When my family or other people in my life ask what I want to do other than being a fantastic wife and I have to explain to them that I wasn't able to pick up the knife and save people as a doctor but that I was hoping to do law, they have a certain look that I just can't ignore. They start to get invasive, ask, oh, what type of law do you want to do? My answer always is, I don't know, whatever will do. It's bad enough that I'm not where I want to be. But now I have to flesh out a half-hearted plan just to please them. See, this wasn't my route. I wanted to be an engineer, biomechanical. In fact, that was the boat that I wanted to steer. 
But I didn't do too well in those godforsaken GCSEs. Life isn't smooth sailing, believe me. Right now, I have specified the sector of law that I want to pursue, but I'm worried that I won't be able to persecute those that I've done wrong because I don't have enough of an attitude. And the thought of me working an actual job, endless nights in the office or cubicle, depending on how initiation goes. The only thing I'm confident about in regards to my future is the discrimination I face because I'm a black female Muslim. So that's three levels of hate. The white people will whisper about my black colleagues and I, and yeah, I won't be the only black person. This isn't 1929. Some might mock my religion and say that I make bombs for a living or that I look like the African kids with flies on their faces from the television. The men might tell me to just give up now. I'll never have what it takes to make it to the top. I might, they say, have a chance if I take off my top. They might say I'll never keep this job if I have kids and that I should stay at home with my babies, wait for my husband and then we all win. I shouldn't have to know what I want to do down the line, but I should do what I want as it is my life. Others around me want to advise, but their two pence are lies or they criticise. I shouldn't have to be worried with how my job title sounds, but in this day and age where those with fair skin are still being rewarded, I just have to work a little bit harder without being rewarded. But anyways, year one at university complete, moving on to year two, wondering how many pages of reading the school expects me to do in a space of a week juggling three or four different modules with their own requirements i can already see myself getting tired and pushing my pens and books to the side to exchange it with netflix and chill on the side so our next poet second poet of the showcase is Tenzin. I am the bright red that fills my gaze when I close my eyes and look up at the sun. Filled with a feeling I can't quite place. Ethereal, like coming undone. In that moment, I forget the traffic outside my room, the worries of day to day will I get that job into me. My anxieties and lonesome thoughts about the future and tomorrow vanish like melting clouds on a summer's day, cleansed of sorrow. The blinding sun takes me back to that field by my old school where I spent my youth playing among the green meadows and the rivers blue. I spent hours watching insects go about their busy lives. Wonder why the bees need it so much, honey to fill their hives. As I sat on the carpet of grass, bare feet with blades between toes, the hills that surround me kept out faded troubles. Little did I know. I can feel the air brushing my cheek and hear the trickling mountain stream. If I close my eyes for long enough, I am once again a childhood dream. Um, that was absolutely amazing. And our next poet is Kariah. Having a conversation with a group of people is like stepping out of a sauna into an ice bath. I freeze up, trip over my words and start trembling all over. Getting out is the only thing I want to do before this discussion changes into an interrogation. With my one word answers, my earliest memory of being around people 
Was me in the middle trying to do the lean to Michael Jackson's smooth criminal. Years later, performing a poem to an audience is like walking into a heated home on a snowy day. I warm up, feel at ease, and no longer have cold feet. Staying there is the only thing I want to do when the vibe is right. After a good show, I hope people don't mistake my quietness for being rude when we chat. Speaking to the public isn't a skill I am confident with, even though I'm a public speaker. But I'm working on it. The same way I do a poem I want to perform. So I'm comfortable to talk in front of a bunch of people. Taking us around the woods. Get ready for Rebel Sade. I have two minutes and 46 seconds to stand out. To convince you to join me on this journey of specially selected vocabulary. Will you notice me? Or like the trees, will I be reduced to forest? Despite my individuality, I ask myself. Is the climb to reach the sky derived from a drive to find light? A burning insight to illuminate from the inside or is it simply just for the bragging right? to upload a perfectly angled leafy on a face tree feed photos synthesized by filtering the realness of experience with the intent to condense perceived imperfection will that make you notice me or will i drown in a sea of evergreen being an echo 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 in this chamber of expression because I believe that the trees grow with no insecurity, have confidence in their durability, no doubt in their capabilities which allow us to breathe. They are highly favoured, backed by nature, swaying in tranquility and in all honesty. As much as I liken my being to one of a tree, the irony in this piece is that I talk of existing unapologetically in the hopes that you might notice me. I feel that I need the validity. So I ask you, will you notice me? And if you like what you see, will you pick me? A wildflower, a symbolic antonym by design, defying expectations, will you pick me? And house me in the fragility of your vase? Will you allow me to wither on your windowsill until I am too lifeless to hold beauty? Wow, I am so blown away already by everyone's poems. Um, so I'm really excited to present our next poet, Noor. They say, as her abaya flows, her innocence blows in the wind. Her wrist slips, her skin's rich. As she sits under a tree with the birds and the bees, they both sing, but Ma said, Ma said that she has to wear a ring just for her to join them to sing, all because her innocence blows in the wind. Why would you put her innocence in the hands of him? Don't teach her such things, like it's his sting that allows her to sing. Everyone knows that the queen is more powerful than the king, but you tell her, to shine like the moon, not the sun. Like she's allowed the light, but only if she stood behind someone's sun. People often wonder why I look to the stars to guide me. 
I often wonder how people miss their lights so blindly. Because when I say that I look for the stars to guide me, I don't mean calculators on compatibility. I mean what the sun and the moon mean to me. You can shine like the moon, but not the sun. Your cycle is 28 days. The sun makes it all the way round in one. It takes you a month to recover. Every month you have to pause your love and whilst the sun's always out somewhere, as soon as the night is done. And all because you were born in a world where they teach little girls that you're second class citizens. I don't want to hear your opinions. You're going to wear that dress. You're going to clean that mess. You know this is a test. I guess I'm wasting my breath trying to teach you about misogyny. About how you've got to deep the family dichotomy of your deep rooted pain. But you think that you can train the patterns of my brain to see myself as small. Just so that you feel bigger. Like, I'm allowed to shine, but only behind your light. Like, I'm not allowed a light of my own. Because I'm the moon, and you're the sun. And you've brainwashed our mums to always see the light in their sons, but they're always dim in their daughters' shine. Always telling us, don't ask why, just stand behind his light. Ma, you're not heavy in your chest. Can you not feel your sweat when they take away your breath, when you tell me that, I'm not allowed a light of my own. I tell you what we've been telling ourselves for years on our own. We are the moon, the sun, the wind that blows. We are the flowers in the garden that they sow. Ma, we are light, full of light, on our own. And our next poet is Elliot. The pendant has four precious petals pressed to its skin. Two tiny oval pictures sealed within. When I open Nanny's pendant, it's like I am snorkeling. Me and my brother's little lemon faces poke our heads out of the reef, smile lines strike. Trees never swayed like they did when she died. Reeds reaching up for a surface of sky. Grief tearing at the surface behind, and me face up. Clouds came apart, rippled back, confused, scar tissue, healing big blue wounds. I'll glue the pieces back in the sea. They've come loose inside. When I open the pendant, I toy with time, the snatching tide, like once after she died. I was by the willow where we used to walk before we both got older, near the silver stream that slivers through green like the chains linking down between my shoulders. I opened the pendant. Strong wind, rip current. The grass was long, my face was gone. I started sifting, lost my vision, fingers ripping. The past was sinking, drowning, something. I was on my knees. Or maybe it was meant to be. Memories, sparks, laughing in the long grass, playing hide and seek. Everything lost exactly where it should be. You hold on to what you can, you love it as it leaves. I got back on my feet, only to see. There was me, smaller than a finger. Face up, poking my head out of the room. Um, I was completely taken away to the seaside with that beautiful poem. So thank you so much. And now we have Rory. You tell me it's the silence from the quarry as we perch in the shadows of its gravestones. 
Ant scale the decaying bark, escaping the waterlogged pitch. Stone wall stands stacked with coarse grain crumbling. In the distance, chimneys puff like old men's pipes as a bus falls past on its hourly route, its sin seats plastic, empty. You stretch out your thin legs, muscles nothing but Bunsen burners beneath a baggy shirt, useless, you say, with a calf too scarred for football. Your skin is the honest surface of the moon, with a shaking hand and a pair of eyes that peek through clouds, you take a clipper from behind one ear and a sugar spoon from the other, flat-handled, silver, headed with a Celtic cross, shimmering, sweat suffocates the goosebumps on your neck. The pregnant face slowly turns into an autumnal sun as you melt rock instead of coal. I've been so moved by all the poets and their poems and I'm so grateful we've got Lexia. Each day when the dawn breaks, the heavy dust covered chest of my eyelids creak open from their crevices. An indigo dream world comes undone, a tie-dyed garment submerged in tepid water. Reality and rituals tap at me, like a silver spoon clinking on the side of a porcelain cup, begging my body to stir and rise as the steam in my morning brew. Over my tea, I scan the wooden countertop, the usual foray of flowers have all made the arrangement. White lilies, stargazers to be precise, baby blue forget-me-nuts, and charming chrysanthemums in flirty pink. The odd orange tulip too. I suppose they're there to remind me of how sweet life can be. <laughs> A swift smile briefly visits my lips until it is snuffed out. My eyes dart back to the kitchen counter. I take in the cards. I swallow the heavy anchor of the words, sorry for your loss. Sorry for what? That I'm in pain and you're not? Fuck sorry! Loss lives here now. It swirls in the back of my throat until the heavy chain drops, donkey kicking me to the gut. I have lived in a perpetual groundhog rut. You and death don't belong in the same sentence. Yet here we are. At the funeral, I just wanted the world to stop. You would understand my irrational need to laugh at the fuss and pomp. You would poke holes in their stories and call it performed grief. They spoke about it too comfortably for it to feel real. And I know others assume the same when I spoke about anything but grief. But you're a fallen green leaf. Just because you're decaying doesn't mean you're dead. That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for that poem. And next up, we have Love More. Write my life on a page, but I'm living in the margins. Farming crops full of doubt for stranded thoughts to harvest. Half my heart is bitter, but I beg your pardon. Left hindered by bridges burnt like tinder, yelling timber till my screams turn to 
whispers, Lord forgive me, I'm a sinner. Hold my faith in loosened fingers, I've been lost since childhood jitters. Adolescence didn't differ, turn to refer for my vigour, think my heart needs something real. I understand my pain, it lingers, I neglect my thoughts, they litter. Find regret, remorse and liquor, make a detrimental mixture. Existential thinker, see my discontent lies deeper. Born to be a leader, conditioned to follow the lessons they teach us. Submissive to sorrow, but careful decorum, place beauty on totems and judge a man's worth by the price of his sneakers. Judging her worth by the shape of her features. Judging her worth, there's no judge on this earth, there's no chance of rebirth, just a woman, a hearse, and that thing in the middle that can't be reversed. And all the way up to Manchester, we have Scarlet Rose. I was born in a space between pages. The gutter learnt to exist within the crease of finger flicks. Mine is one line in a story that slips the lip, dribbling out like grime on a pavement through. My people grew into a spine crippled by chapters too heavy for it. But without us, your book wouldn't exist. We are the binding of your everything. The cement for your bricks, the sewer for your shit, the pot for your piss. We type small and plenty for the large and few. Catch breath between words like council houses. No, gasp for air between letters like street spikes and you sleep on our sentences like we try slanted benches because we look ugly on the cover or because we refused to be ruled down or in so you ruled us out. And more a blank page for you to goldfish. While we fishbowl oceans into margins. With force. But whose line is this dyslexic poet out of to write about it? The only thing I inherited was my mum's prayers and my dad's drink. Aged like interest on a bank debt. But I don't want to own a voice. I just don't want you to own it for me. So I sell syllables on the side because untext means untaxed, right? You'll find me paper scrunched in the crease of cortex with the 99.9% .9 of things left unsaid unfolding ourselves until we crack out of skull It's been so special to see all of the poets so far. And next, we're going to see a poem that has really explored performance on video. We have Casper. In trying to sound poetic, I hear the collective loneliness of harmonious inner city vices, choice words from dark voices at the station of fat control. Thomas, I doubt you'll say tank so. Please don't take offence. Take a gateway drug, but if you're sorry for and against, cheat until you master the bait. 
I replace the fade deep mate with a deep mate. The thoughts deeper than hairs in warts. I forget ironically that if you never tell a lie, you won't have to remember it. But when the untrue tall tales are told to you over and overnight, white fibs beat ribs black and blue, and you're gonna learn today too. Unlearn trust and abandon truth. Roof with less paranoia. How will Lucy fare as a ball and chain? She's emotionally attached to rational answers and can't see chances to break links for false crime of thought in the optic court where dissonance in cognition is caused by icons incognito. In a trench of last laughs with a hermit, that internal intermittent entrance, the feminine glance when a bloke walks into a bar like a knight moving to Queens, he took L's to turn cheeks, red stripes earned in bed, third strike free and you'll be strip searched on Google. Oh, a G got to go if you Google. When he surf for what life is worthy of a bow, now here comes Dougal. Name posher than a mint dick in a polo rubber, that dude will polish a turd with Tate's modern words. Young British verbs are a doddle for Billy, cause he's a turner of the century. It's meant to be. Fate waits when time to burn a no Bunsen. Lord Dunce can trend off his bent now then. Endowment in Frankenstein's imagination of his own reputation in the sack. Ballsy and lackluster, come bust no block. Head but no mop during his midlife, mid-crisis, mid-med psoriasis, skin like a Pisces skating up a tree you are what you be a modern monkey we couldn't teach to catch a cold hill hill slow hill to toe nailed it like a meme in impact front front in like my memories a curse who got laid first but D in DM cause he's the G in orgy or is he is he it's Jesus and them between me and men and mum's lament cause she reads family pack differently to you Jack the lad ped no pad to write or sleep in so I lower expectations and panic and stay with someone who won't leave an asthmatic Masks in the closet, bones in the attic. The lonely runner leaving home is a silito tactic. Lactic consequences late, the onset cramps with pain. I ate it when I'm irate. These human flies' eyes dilate eight times on a blind date. Great grey tea, I did it my way, they all say. All before slave work starts in about five days. For it's Friday that I wait, for time takes its time, mate. My waiting list refined. I make lists for my lists aligned and ticked off in the margins off grid. Cast out to please fill out this survey on class. Working or fast and please rate from good to great and debate till grey tea is stained and filters infiltrate our fate. Very interesting. So this next video also explores digital performance. Please welcome to our screens, Tiffany. From the corners to the textures and the color, I wonder. If they think of me in the same spectrum. As in, do they see me as a member in their family instead of a stranger, imposter, or a mere object in mine? Do they see me in the same colour? As in, red setter. The blend of every family member I've had the pleasure of being with in their presence. A reminder that the sun isn't always so warm nor so cold and that the red setter may really be the reason why I feel so at home away from home. Red setter. The colour of the paths in my maternal terra, I wonder if this familiarity is why I feel like I'm stepping into the warmth of something that I haven't felt physically, but rather objectively thaw to my welcoming. Fred Seder, my maternal cellar. I really wonder if all the travels we made to finally be together, the ones that didn't necessarily wear and tear the impeccability that is our exterior and that brittled our interior, is why I feel the heaviest clouds linger over the warmest place where I find your praise. I wonder if you will ever leave my embrace. 
leave me to figure out the rest of my days and force me to grow into the adult that you've helped to raise but I collapse dehydrated to say please do not fall for the chance of travellers and for the bargains of easier lives for they will only burn my gaze to what will scold my sight and soon be the reason why I sit here today to write this ode to your presence in my life. Um, it's been so wonderful to see all the different themes that our poets are using. And in this next one, we are connecting the cedar tree to our environment. So next up, we have Robin. Before we fight, we must learn each other's language. Strangle the strangeness of hatred into weaponized empathy. It is only when the plowshares of friendship are sharpened that we can access the steaming flesh of inner peace. There are too many weirdos on the internet. Some paid to outrage, others just eject it in reaction to imagined attacks on their chattel. I mostly stay away from their battles, prefer more mathematical chats to the wrestle of intuition. When your occupation's researching climate change, the fights will find you and won't listen to a smart ass. The worst part is when I find a small issue in a simulation and some Twitter contrarian likes what I say and it's like, oh shit, I accidentally used the advice we all give and got rapport. What the fuck do I want that for? It in no way undermines our central claims about changing climes, but they won't listen when I explain. Then some ex-oil exec emails me. It seems that he needs to believe it's not all his fault when a drought or flood falls. I don't console him, because a bit of it is, and I don't have the time to unpick every lie he's been stitched in. Instead, I send him a link to a website, skepticalscience.com, and a short outline of how his life brings just the right skills to unwind the bad times we find outside. Mostly, I mean, you have money, but he gets excited about the hydrogen economy, which we may need for renewable heat, and like that, we've stopped arguing, started solving. Last I saw, he forwarded my email to some climate denier he knows. It was the opposite of viral. Quiet. Conversational but I hope for a woody resonance. The exchange of guilty footprints for soil-stained hands. I was so lucky to hear this poem in one of its earliest stages. Please get your ears ready for Isosa. p.m. Atmosphere outside held an air raid of humid warmth, and inside his house under the artillery rain from the rays of this Nigerian sun was a seven-year-old boy with the barrel of a gun pointed at him, threatening to sneeze in his face and blow his head off. My last thoughts would probably consist of me wondering whether I could cast whole black pennies into the welling tears of my little brother and wish our dad present to be a hero to rescue us from this hostage situation. But reality converted wishing wells into ice rinks of skating expectations. The only thing I imagined trembling more than fear in this room was the heart held behind refrigerator rib cages of these monsters who had weapons pointed at a woman and her sons. In return, my face was frozen firm. Expression and ice sculpture of masculinity displayed as if to say, if you touch my mom or brother, you're going to be singing Let It Go in Hell. Strain and trench feet into daddy's frostbit shoes. Attempting to wear this responsibility of manhood prematurely Trying not to think of days where questions about him filled my mind instead of memories Mum, where's daddy? Is he coming back soon? Scared a sharp nose would pierce through his heart like a harpoon But just like a candlelight in a dark room He steps into frame so this broken family photo won't fall apart too I know you thought this was another black boy story of an absent father It isn't He ain't run away late in a grave, or sitting in prison. He was in England, building a home in hopes we'd go meet him. 
and we did a family reunion. I suppose I could end this piece here with this happy institution. But granted wishes don't always have fantasy conclusions and instead of absence, I got a dad who was emotionally distant and abusive. 2 p.m. Atmosphere outside was December 25th in a house that felt furnace hot. I was 17 when the mouth of this man became the muzzle of a flame door, spitting words that could cremate Lazarus. Parakinesis was his superpower, but this wasn't the hero I wished for. He claimed that mum respected the pastor more than she loved him, took the keys, locked each door, wouldn't let us go to church for it. This was a hostage situation. And soon, the sirens I didn't hear a decade ago would come in like the cavalry, but they wouldn't be able to rescue, rescue us from this burning building because we lied for him. Or they would ask me why mom's got a black eye. And I would respond through tears in mind that she's a pirate, her body a ship, and this marriage an ocean that she dared to cross but ended up capsizing in. Daddy was the arsonist. Who would have thought that it would be words and fists instead of bullets that would burn through all the hope this black boy held for a father? It's been such an amazing range of themes and topics with these poems. And now our penultimate poet, Sarah. I am trying to find an effective way of communicating my strangeness. Somehow, I am both star guide and sheep a two-headed titan between certainty and sleep, with a body that once spoke in premonitions and dreams until I followed intellect over belief. Now, I am scared of my own strength. Forget there is honey dripping sun from my gut to make myself sick with worry. Discover I can break myself in to disappointment and dishonesty, get used to the burden, Pray and hope for better, and remember, there are no rewards for working towards a finish line drawn in water. My last taste of freedom was amniotic, my mother's womb, a place of anticipation, no expectations of what a black girl should be. No wonder my spirit fled the world when she met it. You see, my body was birthed a grotto, housing a chorus of women, and it became a squatter's paradise, crowded with familiar strangers intent on stealing light. There were doors without knobs, frosted window panes, doubt crept up the walls. Did I invite this destruction? This Mary Poppins home of sacrifice, I cannot withstand the price of always fixing things. One step at a time, everything will be all right. One step at a time, everything will be fine. One step at a time. I am building a monument in the open air ruins. A solid teak table sits in fire smoke under a lavender sky, and surely the women born of myself return. I am the little girl popping bubbles that explode with her laughter. I am the childless mother. I am the risk taker driven mad, and I am more than I could ever say. And we build a home here in the rubble. We find fragments to piece together a life that is more than bearable. We sing more in tune each day, and I feel more myself. Don't care what anyone else thinks or feels about me. This is my creation story, if I will let it be. So we are at the end of our digital showcase. We have one poet left. And I hope what you've learned from this is that poetry can take place everywhere. Please get ready for Gemma. Conversation one in bed where nothing happened, but everything was said. 
I'm always eager to please explain myself unnecessarily. See, my granddad, he didn't want to wear one. So Nana knocked up with sons. They're here and they're lovely, but she died near the bottle. I thought the misty gin on her breath would sing through lies until the death, so I didn't try to listen and she did not try to live. Then when my mum pushed me out, she followed through with her dinner on my head, said she'd held it in for my brother. I don't want to resent a daughter, beg for gin instead of water, so I bought one of the skin types. Why aren't you on the pill? Uh, it messed with my brain. Wouldn't a baby do the same? Mess with your body too. I'd really like you to put one on. Would you make me take the pill if you could? Would I? I play back all the hospital visits. Body splayed, lay with that photo of a beach plastered above my head. Some fake trip to the Maldives, taunting as I bled. Thought they could trick me into teleportation. A colposcopy vacation, would I? I would push those pills down your throat, baby, like she shoved that camera right up in me. Conversation two in bed. Where nothing happened and nothing could be said. I sit with my brother. Each hour that moves, he is less able to soothe, says they want to fly to space. Houses laced with bricks of notes float around in Snoopy caps. Groupies with girls not afforded suits can't breathe, choking held down on their knees. Deliveries served by chefs on earth. Tiny little girths lusting locked pocket rocketing away whilst I want to stay, hide here with you. Scared of blood boiling like bruise, chugging fumes like oxygen, weather warnings, milk runs by paddle boarding, hoarding all the aircon installments, all the babies crying. Why the fuck did you have to let us out? I want back in, back in, back in. Start packing, darling. We can't live here anymore. The earth is cracking open wide open wide open your mouth oh shit there's nothing to put in it conversation three in bed where everything happened but the thing could not be said i fell in he watched the ufc had me up till 6 a.m big grown men groaning into bursting muscles out of shorts contorted faces growled at cameras waved at crowds with venom in mouths and i still want to stay because they play or fight or play fight I could lie right here forever I I I don't know how to say it so what I'll say is I call you mate just like I call everyone mate but you are so far from anyone to me this year it's been a lot and what a way to make it through ending up in bed with you Oh, fuck it, I can't even finish this new piece, because... Wow, I have been completely blown away and so, so inspired by this group of artists and poets. Uh, it's been incredible to see how a uh, live poetry performance gets digitalized and, mm -hmm. you know, all the amazing things that are possible with, you know, digital filming and live performance and I really hope that whoever watched this does it at home themselves yeah absolutely and that is a like one of the aims of this program is to kind of ensure that as many people watch this as possible so if you enjoyed what you saw please like it please share please subscribe you know smash that like button or whatever those youtubers say um we've been representing the apples and snakes branch of it branch um and so that's at apples and snakes but there's other partners so there's nine arches there's new right in north there's young identity and there's new Riki. and so please do watch their showcases and become even more inspired also if you want to see them all grouped together then the hashtag that's what hashtags are for so hashtag words first um, but it's not the end. This is not the end of the programme or the road. So all of these poets will be will continue to be supported by Apples and Snakes and, and the partners that are involved. But a couple of them um, from each group will go through to perform at Contained Strong Language Festival, which will take place next month in Coventry. So get your tickets, find out more about that on the websites um, and continue to watch and support these poets grow. But the scene is the scene is popping off. And so it's not just um, what you've seen, there's more and more and more, including as you say, Dre, kind of you at home, get your phone out, get your laptop out and, and film your poems and see what, see what you can create. Amazing. Thank you so much, everyone who joined us today. And yeah, we hope to connect with you and write poetry with you very soon. 
Yeah, man, you smashed it. Well done. <laughs> I've been Deanna Roger. I've been Andreas Bisto. <laughs> See you later. Bye. <laughs>